Hi everybody, in this part of the video I want to discuss some history, and as I told you, I am the admin for two different groups. This group, Cuckoo Clocks and All Things Black Forest UK, um, is strictly for Cuckoo Clocks and All Things Black Forest UK, and so in the featured item of these groups which is at the very top, you will find a lot of history on cuckoo clocks. And I'm going to discuss some of that history in this video. Now, this database right here is the best trademark database that I came across. And if you have a movement that has a trademark on it you go to this database and you search for it or you click on each letter and it will bring you up the trademark and a lot of times it will give you uh, the history of that trademark when it was developed and stuff like that and I will link uh, leave a link to this um, um, web page in the description of this video. There are certain clocks that are the most sought after clocks. Beha is one of those clocks. And this link here takes you to some Beha history. And you could click on each one of those um, pictures and it'll talk about Beha um, uh, clocks. Trumpeter clocks are some of the uh, also most sought after cuckoo style clocks and Frank Snyder this is his uh, YouTube channel he repairs trumpeter clocks professionally for a living and you have to have a few thousand dollars to uh, own a trumpeter clock Depending on the book that you read is depending on the history of clocks that you're going to get. Um, the introduction of the group that I made, history, is often misled. Um, History is in the eyes of the person that wrote that book. And oftentimes, that book is influenced by money or by a government. And I gave an example. Um, uh, most Americans believe that the Wright brothers was the first heavier-than-air flight. Uh, Kitty Hawk and December of... Uh, uh, 1909, I believe. Anyway, um, when I was stationed over in England, um, I took a college course. The college professor one day brought in a newspaper that was dated before the Wright brothers burst heavier than air flight. And it was uh, uh, an airplane flew by a French person. The Wright brothers uh, wanted their names to be the very first people who ever flew an airplane. The U.S. War Department wanted their uh, plans for the plane, so they made an agreement, and history is as you know it. Joseph Berger... 
and I will show you uh, some history on him. Um, developed the regular trademark uh, for clock movements. Most clock movements these days are regular. Herbert Herr went out of business a couple years ago. So regular is one of the uh, still known uh, manufacturers of clock movements. In 1970, they started a date code. It will list the type of movement and then either a two digit year or a letter that identifies when that movement was made. And this NAWCC posting talks about those date codes. Here is uh, Berger uh, history, Joseph Berger. And you click on this and it'll uh, bring you to uh, uh, some of uh, uh, family history. And here it shows you that the founder uh, was from 1856 to 1888. But anyway, uh, when you get a chance, uh, uh, subscribe to my group and uh, read about this information. Here's a link. It talks about clock making in Germany through famous clock makers. You click on that, and there's several uh, listed uh, clock makers. Not all of them are listed. And again, I'm not going to sit here and read all this information to you because, as I said before, the history on clocks is depending on the author of the web page or the book. But when you get a chance, read this information, and it, it's got some good information in it. Here's some information from the NAWCC on uh Cuckoo Clock History. And again, I'm not going to read this. Because, um, as I said before, you would have to read it and determine for yourself what you believe and what you don't believe. The American Cuckoo Clock Company was one of the, uh, uh, and still is, one of the most sought-after cuckoo clocks. And at the bottom of this uh, webpage, there's some history on the American Cuckoo Clock Company. Now, this is some history on the cuckoo birds. And it is taken from my book, Black Forest Clocks by Rick Ortenberger. In this book... There's a section in here that talks about the the development of the cuckoo bird. It says one of the very first things to go is the articulated wings in a cuckoo bird. Well, beha clocks and a lot of the antique clocks did not have articulated wings. So you can uh, view these pictures 
on this group page or in my other group, everything that I have in this group, I have in my collections group also, plus a lot more because we deal with more than just cuckoo clocks. But you can um, uh, view these birds and it'll show you the transition of, uh, of the stages and dates. This is my good friend Kevin Lackey who passed away and who uh, created this group. Um, he had a beha clock that did not have articulated wings. George Kuhl um, was German that came to the United States in about 1908, a little bit earlier, and uh, set up a, a clock company. In this NAWCC webpage, it will discuss in 1908 and earlier, he identified uh, his clocks around the uh, dial that said, Made in Germany, Cool Clock Company, Chicago, Illinois. This book, The Clock Repairs Bench Manual, and the uh, Carl Kutchman book that I showed to you earlier, it identifies different plates and who made those plates. Now this NAWCC posting here is a question that I made to the NAWCC uh, back around 2019 when I started getting into cuckoo clock repair. Seriously, I asked them at what time frame did they swap over from a count wheel system to the rack and snail system and you can read it for yourself the answer is uh, there's no definite answer for each manufacturer of companies but by 1955 or thereabouts all german manufacturer companies had swapped over from a count wheel system to the rack and snail system Here's a um, uh, YouTube video that uh, a good friend of mine, Seth Linkfelter, has put out on the East Meckenbecker Cathedral Clock. The East Meckenbecker cuckoo clocks are some of the most sought after cuckoo clocks there are. And this particular clock, if it has all, uh, both trumpeters, outside arms and the king's scepter uh, they can sell for around 700 to 800 dollars if you click on this link it will tell you about the henry kohler uh, company uh, they came to the united states and in the 1950s and 1960s sold clocks and Clicking on this document, um, which is a uh, an adverti uh, a, a section um, off of clockhistory.com, will tell you all the clocks that Heco, Henry Kohler and Company, um, sold. I'm just going to discuss this YouTube channel really fast. Torsion Dell uh, does a great job on. 400 day or anniversary clocks but the reason I mention this is because Schatz who does a lot of torsion slash anniversary clocks also made 8 day cuckoo clocks and I'll show you how to identify a Schatz cuckoo clock in a little bit this talks about dating a clock whether it says Germany or West Germany. If you have a clock movement that has DRGM, it's basically a copyright. It was started in a, 
1950s for the Germans. Here, and I'm going to blow this up, my good friend Kevin Lackey created this cuckoo movement stand from looking at the uh, movement stand that uh, that I bought. I'm going to say I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to see if I can. But there you can see it's made out of uh, wood and it works really good. He's got a couple of nails in the top part of the wood or hooks to hook the movement into and you can easily do that. And people ask me all the time, are Germans the only people who made cuckoo clocks? No, they're not. The Black Forest cuckoo clocks are the most sought after cuckoo clocks. However, they are not the only people that made cuckoo clocks. Miken is a, a Japanese company that made cuckoo clocks in the 50s and 60s. Um, the Russians made cuckoo clocks. Uh, in my personal opinion, they're a little bit cheaper than other cuckoo clocks. Popo is a Japan company that made cuckoo clocks in the 50s and 60s. Uh, the Australians made cuckoo clocks. Um, Switzerland made cuckoo clocks. And other countries besides Germany made cuckoo clocks. But again, German Black Forest cuckoo clocks are the most sought after cuckoo clocks, to my knowledge. Now we're going to discuss these movements from that book that I told you about, but also Carl Kutchman books uh, 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 mentioned some of these movements. And here it shows regular, um, but it doesn't tell you when the movement was made. And so, uh, and here it shows some more regular movements. More regular movements. More regular movements. Again, regular is a trademark from Joseph Berker. Here it starts, uh, her. Herbert Herr was, uh, made their own movements. Uh, East Mackenbacker utilized regular clocks. Um, Popo cuckoo clocks have a regular 25 identical movement or very similar to a regular 25 movement in most of their clocks. And AMS, which stands for Andreas Myers and Schalchenbach, uh, forgive me for uh, mispronouncing names, but here's an AMS movement. Bat off movements. And I can't think of what bat off stands for off the top of my head. More her movements. I believe this movement here is for a cuckoo quail that I just got through uh, working on.
MES, I believe they were Switzerland. Uh, don't quote me on that. And here's the shots. You can tell it's a shots moment because it, it has a an outline of a bird in it. Shots has the dates on their movements. Again, it was taken from that book right there. Here's a Herbert Her cuckoo quail movement with a count wheel. This is the count wheel, the wheel that has all the notches in it. And again, by the 1950s, all German manufacturers did away with the count wheels. Here's that East Meckenbecker uh, cathedral clock. Uh, mine was missing the arms. I uh, used uh, some uh, uh, East Meckenbecker uh, woodsman clock arms to put the arms. I still got to put the uh, trumpeters, and it's also missing the king scepter. Here is uh, a Popo cuckoo clock. Here is a Mikan cuckoo clock. Here's an antique cuckoo clock. Here's a Schmeckenbecker woodsman clock without the water wheel. Here's another antique cuckoo clock. I have a bunch of uh, novelty clocks that are considered uh, the cuckoo family. Here's a Popo cuckoo clock with calendar uh, with the proper deer head on it. Uh, one on Etsy sold for about $400. Here's an eight-day uh, uh, cuckoo clock. And we're going to go over the difference between a one-day and an eight-day. Here's another Popo uh, cuckoo clock with music. I really love those. Here's a Schmeckenbecker uh, cuckoo clock. These things sell for about $200. Here's, again, it's part of the cuckoo uh, family. Uh, when you pull the string, if I can pull the string, music plays and the light bulb's supposed to come on. It's just the battery's not making contact. There's a light bulb in there. Uh, they're really sought after clocks and they're kind of hard to find. Here's a George Cool Cuckoo Quail movement. And you could see the plates are much thicker in the antique movements. This movement is identified with a GK, and he got that trademark in December of 1908, I believe. Um, the birds are wooden. They have articulated wings, and we're going to talk more about this type of clock later. Again, you have a count wheel. This is the count wheel for the cuckoo side. This is the count wheel for the quail side. Another style of what's considered in the cuckoo family. This is a, uh, uh, a Japan-made uh, owl cuckoo clock with moving eyes. This is a, uh, a cooner, uh, what's considered a shadow box cuckoo clock. Now, this is my most pride and joy right here between this and that 1908 uh, George Cool Cuckoo Clock. This is a 1880 after the hunt Hunter's Cuckoo Clock made by Alexander Fleeg. And again, it was made in 1880. It's considered an after the hunt Cuckoo Clock because the rabbit is dead 
and it's hanging upside down and it would have a rope on the rabbit's leg same way with the pheasant because they would tie their animals to their uh, pants or coats or whatever um, um, and they would be upside down and of course it has the guns it has the uh, 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 pouch uh, the horn and this thing is beautiful and that's my most pride and joy out of all my cuckoo clocks and by the way this movement doesn't have it but I showed you that the shots movements are easily identifiable because they have a bird in the silhouette of the uh, back plate of the movement with the Alexander Fleeg movements. And not all of them do because this one doesn't have it, but it's stamped with their trademark on this movement. But their movements have a silhouette of a house. And Alexander Fleeg is one of the most, uh, along with Beha, GHS, and a few others, are uh, the, one of the uh, most sought-after uh, cuckoo clocks. Now, this is a before-the-hunt hunter's cuckoo clock, a one-day cuckoo clock. And as you can see, the... Pheasant and the rabbit are upside right, and they're standing on a piece of ground. A lot of people turn the dead rabbits upside down, uh, I mean upside right, uh, but they that's not how they go. This rabbit is alive. It's standing on a piece of ground. It's called a before-the-hunt hunter's cuckoo clock. It still has the guns, it still has the deer pouch. It doesn't have the horn on this one, but uh, it's called a before the hunt hunter's cuckoo clock. And I just noticed I have an ear that's broken off and I'm gonna have to uh, fix that one day. Now here is the case for my George Cool um, uh, cuckoo quail clock. I just showed you the movement. But around the dial, it, it says, made in Germany, Cool Clock Company, Chicago, Illinois. And I showed you that the NAWCC webpage showed that the only time that they marked their ch chapter rings like this was in 1908 or earlier. So this clock could very well be made earlier. George Cool came to the United States and to, uh, uh, to set up shop, he would have his friends back in Germany take clocks apart and ship them to the United States. And that way he did not have to pay as much, if at all, duty tax. So um, uh, there's uh, no telling when some of the clocks were made that were shipped to George Cool and Company. Um, uh, in uh, my collections group, this gentleman by the name of Michael Georgia has a, a, a GK Cuckoo Goose clock that is just marvelous. It plays like five different tunes or four different tunes. Subscribe uh, to my groups. Check out the videos. There's no, there's no way that that clock was made in 1908 or newer. And I have clocks, cuckoo clocks, all over my house. And I have a bunch still in boxes that I need to repair. Um, this is one of my stands, and it has, it's a um, cuckoo quail clock by Herbert Her. But you see how this lever is set up? 
this lever is designed to play the cuckoo only on the hour. Uh, the older uh, uh, clocks, as far as I know, for cuckoo quail clocks, only played the cuckoo on the hour. And I'm going to trip this movement here so you can hear. And this would be on the top of the hour. I bought this thing for myself for Christmas uh, uh, last year, and it needs cleaned up. Even though it's running fine, you can see all that gunk on the gears. Um, it was running when I bought it, and uh, I believe in uh, if it ain't broken, don't uh, fix it, um, which is not the right attitude when it comes to uh, 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 clocks, because a clock needs to be serviced, especially a cuckoo clock needs to be serviced every three to five years because the way it's designed, it has a change coming up through the movement and it's bringing all the dust and hair and, and whatever up into the movement. And so it's not enclosed like a, uh, a German, uh, eight day clock or English eight day clock or French eight day clock or whatever. Uh, uh, they need to be serviced every three to five years. That is taking the movement out, cleaning it, uh, disassembling it, cleaning it, uh, checking for damage, uh, um, fixing any damage, and putting it all back together. This is another clock that I'm working on. It's considered a fox and grapes uh, cuckoo clock. It has what is called a regular 701 movement in it. Um, those plates that I showed you did, did not have a regular 701 movement. And there's a regular 701 and a regular 702. And I believe that they are the prerequisites to the regular 71 and the regular 72. And uh, I believe that this is a one-day uh, cuckoo clock, but it's enormous. And you also have the uh, Lux Pendulet clocks. And uh, uh, Dan and Diana's webpage shows most of the Lux clocks. They got the best webpage out there for Lux clocks. And I will leave a, uh, um, no, I'm not going to do that in this video. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this section of the video. And uh, um, uh, my back is bothering me a lot. Uh, I, I want to show you one more clock. This is a quarter hour cuckoo clock. So, yes, Australia did make cuckoo clocks. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. I hope that you learned stuff. Um, uh, su subscribe to my um, uh, Facebook groups, and you can uh, read all about all the history that I have in the featured items. Um... And again, uh, uh, my group expert on Black Forest uh, clocks is Valentin Weber, and uh, he can answer any question uh, for the most part that I cannot answer. Uh, um, so uh, uh, please hit the subscribe button to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends about my new YouTube channel and uh, leave me some comments. Tell me what you think so far and may God bless each and every one of you.